Hey guys, Corey Smith here, CoreFX. Just doing a quick video here. It's about 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time <clears throat> on July the 12th. It's a Wednesday. It's been a pretty slow week so far. Not too much going on fundamentally to drive prices too much. Some uh, geopolitical risk going on in the U.S., which is affecting the markets uh, all around the world. As there's big liquidity coming out of the U.S. Summer months as well, so liquidity is also low. Bankers vacation, everything's kind of in a slow time of the year. But we've got some, some news coming out today, should create some volatility, should be some good uh, opportunities to trade here. So I'm going to go ahead and break down um, a potential trade I'm looking to make in this morning. So uh, the Canadian bank has their uh, rate statement at 10 a.m. in about an hour and a half. And basically the rate statement is the overnight rate that banks lend each other and it has an effect across the entire economy. And if uh, rates are hiked, that means they raise the interest rates. This is uh, uh, for carry trades and such like this. It's bullish for currencies. So typically, if, if a central bank raises their interest rates, uh, it's going to be a bullish sign for the currency. Um, Canadian Bank hasn't raised their interest rates in seven years. Economy is looking pretty good lately. And uh, although they don't really have inflation to fight, which is the, the main reason for raising interest rates, um, it's still... It's still, as you can see in the U.S. and other countries around the world, starting to hike rates again, getting into another rate cut, rate hike. Um, it's still something that they're thinking about doing. That being said, if they don't raise interest rates, there could be some disappointment and the, the CAD could weaken. So I found a nice setup here on the Euro CAD. The reason I have the CAD paired up against the Euro, as you know, in Forex, everything's a two-way transaction. So if you're ever going to go bullish one thing, you have to be bearish another. So if I think the CAD is going to be bearish, then what I'm going to be doing is pairing it up against the strongest currency of late, which is the Euro. The Euro has been performing the highest lately. So what I'm going to do is go onto the Euro CAD. As you can see, it's been in a strong downtrend. As we pull up the daily chart here, you can see price topped out around uh, $1.52 up top there and has been making lower lows and lower highs since. We got a lower low here, lower high, lower low lower high, came back and retested the lower low, no structure broken, still a downtrend. Now it's back up retesting the lower high, still no structure broken. However, if we break it down back to the four hour chart, you can see this is the previous lower low, I mean lower high. Price is right at it, respecting it. It's also a strong support turn resistance area, as well as a strong supply zone. As you can see, price fell off really hard with a strong imbalance here. So. What I'm going to be doing is, you can see price is chopping around already, anticipating this. So basically, this is showing that the, this is a big area of indecision. And price is going to react from the news either way. And it is going to react one way or the other. And potentially, it could be a strong move in either direction. But one of the best ways to anticipate the future move of a price is based on the past. That's technical analysis, and that's what, that's what we do everything based off of. And the, cat, the euro has been so strong lately that I'm going to look for this pair only if the cat is weak and pair it up against what's been the strongest lately. So that being said, if there's a rate hike and the Canadian dollar starts becoming bullish, I'm not going to enter this trade, obviously. This is just for one end of it. So, actually, let me go over some more things real quick. So uh, another reason I like this area is if you pull out the Fibonacci tool, you can see... Price is right in between the golden area of Fibonacci. It's right in this area between 38.2 and 61.8. This is the key reversal area for trend continuation patterns. You still have the 786 up here, but that is like the last line of defense. And at that point, you're so close to a full retracement that it, the, the, the retracement is not really likely to reverse there. The 38.2 to 61.8 and in between is the most likely area. So, if price breaks up above here, it is another reason to show that the trend is reversing even more as this strong area is being broken out of. Now, with that being said, what I'm going to do to enter this trade is I'll go down to the hourly chart. You can see price made a double bottom. The neckline of the double bottom falls exactly where all this area of confluence is stacking, right? This trend line has been respected multiple touches now since the beginning of last month. 
So this is a very strong trend line. You can see price chopping around like crazy around it. As you can tell, there's a big struggle going on between buyers and sellers. And we got to see who wins that battle when this news comes out. So what I'll be doing to enter this trade, I will be putting a stop up around here above the prior high. Okay? So what I'm going to be looking for is when the news comes out and the press conference comes out and they're discussing the rate hike, why they did or didn't, price could be chopping around. And if I have an entry right above here, the candles, the, the bodies or anything like that, I could get triggered and then price can chop right down and stop me out like happens in most people in news events. It's the, that's why news event trading is typically looked at to stay away from for people, for traders. Um, professional traders really love news events because they create a lot of volatility and liquidity, which is why we trade. That's how we make money. So if you can make 150 pips in 20 minutes as opposed to waiting three days for a trade to make its way, then uh, if you know what you're doing, news trades are awesome. They're great. They're, they're perfect. So yeah, the, that being said, you will get stopped out of a lot of news trades and there's just nothing you can do about that. But when you manage your risks and have tight stops and know what you're doing, the risk is a lot lower than the reward. So, okay, so going into the event, I'm going to have a stop right up here above, above the highs of this previous um, high, lower high, as we were saying, in the bigger downtrend. I'll have an entry up here. And I typically use the ATR on the hourly chart. The ATR is 20 pips. So the uh, basically it moves an average of 20 pips in an hour. So what I would usually do is put the stop to ATR below that. So it's if in a normal hour it moves 20 pips, I'm going to go two normal hours since this is a, a news release. We've got 48.40. So let's see 48 even. That's a psychological number, so I'm going to go a little bit below that. I'll do 47.95. So this trade would be risking about 45 pips, right? And I'll typically use the same methodology for finding my targets to an extent. I will want to have my target... I want to enter a trade with at least a 2 to 1 risk reward, sometimes 1.5, but at least a 2 to 1. And what I do with that is I will look to make sure that structure lines up with that. So as you can see, there's a lot of structure in here. And that's about a little over a 1 to 1 move. So what you could do is once price hits this level, which you know price is going to at least for a slight moment stall because of all this indecision and all this prior support and resistance you can once price hits that level okay now I'm gonna adjust my stop to break even risk free trade now and wait for the take profit to be hit alright so this is where the previous structure is and if I look at the two to one move the next major previous structure is a little bit in here but the next major is gonna be up in here right as you can see, if you look all the way back, it's also right here as well. And there's a lot of space in between. So, hypothetically, we could have our stop up here. Now, that's going to be like a 3.5 or so to 1. It's a 3.1 to 1. I, I don't need to risk that much. So, I'm going to have it at a 2 to 1 up here. Also, you can see the 1 to 1 move of the double bottom. It's a double, double bottom on the hourly chart. But the uh, 1 to 1 move of the double bottom is also going to be right around where that structure is. So that is a great area right there. But um, I'm going to have a little bit more of a conservative take profit. So my take profit is going to be 2 to 1. And it looks like price should have no problem, especially with a news event. Once price hits that, I'll, I'll trail my stops. And I've got a few different methods of that. Um, you know, my students learn all that. And you can message me for details about learning this a little bit more in depth. I just wanted to share one of the trades I'm looking at here today. As you can see, price is uh, CAD's weakening a little bit right now in anticipation of this event. But uh, we still have about an hour and 15 minutes. Price should chop around a little. Now, if the news is coming out and price is sitting right up here around my entry, I'm going to give it a little bit of a cushion. If price is trading right around here when the news is coming out, it's too easy for me to get my order triggered and then price to just chop straight down right into my stop loss and shoot down to the uh, CAD being strong but the bearish side of this chart so if, if price is trading right around where it is now right on up here I'm gonna give it a little bit of a cushion I'm gonna go a little bit higher give it maybe 10 15 pips 
let it let it let some follow through develop before it triggers. Um, so this is just my style of how I trade news events. Uh, I'm also going to be looking at um, New Zealand CAD and uh, maybe CAD yeah, and some other ones. So uh, I'll be pairing up some poor performing, weaker performing this week currencies in case they do raise rates and we do see Canadian dollar strengthen. So I'll have potential set up on the other side just in case and I'll see which trade triggers and which way I'm going to ride it. But I just wanted to do a quick video to show you guys how I trade the news events and, um, you know, what I'll be looking for this morning to make a trade. My students, I'll be sending out the alert too. But uh, anybody else, you can keep an eye on it and follow what I just saw that said a strategy. This is just a suggestion. This is uh, no means me telling you what to do with your money or me having anything to do with what happens with the trade. I'm just sharing my opinion. That is all this is. It's educational material. It's not any recommendation to buy or sell any kind of investment tool. So thank you guys. Again, this is Corey with CoreFX. Quick video showing you how I trade news events and what I'm looking at this morning here on July 12th. Thank you guys and have a great day.